He is the man who was... Yeah, by <laughs> Sugar Sean's side at UFC 299. Front and center. The brains behind it all. Another victory. A first title defense in their back pocket. He's the Red Hawk. He is Tim Welch, quickly becoming a fan favorite on the program. Hello, Tim. Yeah. Hey, Ariel. How's it going, brother? You hear the music? Oh, I hear it. Is that it? I hear it loud and clear. Is that the That's one? That's it. That's the one. Yeah, Frankie, we did it. We did it, Frankie. <laughs> we nailed it. Uh, how are you, sir? Everything's going pretty smooth. Every, every, everything's going pretty smooth. I got uh, four guys I'm getting ready to fight here in a couple weeks, and uh, everything at the dojo is going good. We added a matcha to the coffee menu at the coffee shop. We added a chai, and then we did some sourdough cinnamon rolls Ooh. baked fresh weekly, and those are becoming a hit. So everything's going good. What about the almond, the oat milk? Any uh, Any word on that? We still got uh, – we got oat milk, okay. some of the finest oat milk you can find. Almond milk, we're probably going to – Serious. You know, just, just, a, a lot of people say oat milk is worse for you than almond. You know this, right? Well, I think it does spike your blood sugar a bit, but uh, it mixes with espresso really well. You like almond milk? It's that Love it's it. watery, isn't no, it? No, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. Yeah. You Hate look like soy. an almond milk guy. Why, why did that, no, nothing, you, and nothing wrong with that. You can't say that. You can say soy milk guy. You could say all that. You can't say almond milk guy. What does that mean? I mean... No, you look, you look, you look good. You look good. So, I've been working out, Timbo. I don't know if you know this about me. Three times a week doing the boxing. You don't want to see this jab. I, no, I believe you. Yeah, Have you ever thanks. done jujitsu or anything? Uh, yes, in my early days, like around 2010, 2011. You know, a bit of a germaphobe. I'm not not ashamed to say that, and and didn't enjoy. It. I really enjoy the boxing. Like I genuinely look forward to it. Didn't love the jujitsu. Did you try no gi? Is that what it was? It was gi. It was gi. You yeah. barely even get any sweat on you for the in the gi. It's, a, it's not. It's just. It's a lot of touching. It's a lot of you know. It's a lot of breathing. Yeah, I actually gave a private to a guy named Evan Longoria. I don't know if you him. Yeah, of course. Know him? The baseball player? Uh, Third baseman? Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday wow. he contacted me to get some jujitsu, and he had his first first jujitsu lesson, and he did really good. That's quite the name drop, by the way. Yeah, I didn't realize how big of a star he was until I posted that story of him, and everyone was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the all-time great third basemen. Uh, Tampa Bay, San Francisco, well done. He lives in the area? He's a nice guy, too. Yeah, he lives probably 30 minutes from me. Nice guy, super open-minded, wasn't afraid to get beat up a little bit, and he's pumped to learn jiu-jitsu. So. Will he continue? Yeah, yep, twice a week, he said. Just privates, or is he going to, you know, is he going to tussle with the uh, the amateurs at the gym? I uh, will probably do privates for a bit, okay. but I always like people to get in, get into some classes and get some tough goes with some other people. I think it's good for them. And by the way, uh, I, I do have to say, I really enjoy your narration on your videos. Like there was one in particular that I really enjoyed. Like I think your video game controller wasn't working and then you went back and you shot it with a bow and arrow or something. Uh, it's very sort of no nonsense. There's a little comedic value to it, but it's just, it's just working. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to pinpoint why it's special, but it's it's really good. So keep it up. Yeah, seem, people seem to like the voiceovers, so I, I definitely will keep it up. Does it take a lot of work? Not really. I just do it all myself. I just set up my phone, and then on this little app called InShot, I can voice it over really easy, and it's ready to go. Look at you. Unbelievable. How do you have time for all of this? You're doing so much as far as your YouTube. You're in, you did a show earlier today, I believe. You're also coaching world champions. Does it ever get to you know, the coffee shop, of course? Is it a lot? Is it too much? Uh, sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming, especially like right after the fight when everyone wants to do something. Everyone want to wants to come with you, come to you for an idea. But I've been I'm reading this book called Essentialism, and it talks about just how different ways to say no and saying no respectfully. And uh, so I'm working on that. I'm working on saying no to things and focusing on the things that give me my my greatest return. Okay. Well, thanks for not saying no to us. Uh, it's good to have you on, especially after a big win. A uh, couple of weeks removed now. How do you feel about your guy, his performance, the total body of work at UFC 299? I feel good. I mean, I, I knew Cheeto was going to have to get lucky with something. I knew with something, but I know how fighting is, and that kind of stuff happens. I know Sean could throw one wrong kick and break his foot or th punch his elbow, and now he's dealing with a broken hand. I know how fighting is, so I wasn't never overconfident for this fight. I'll never be overconfident again um, after that first Cheeto fight, but it, it went exactly how I expected. Um, I didn't think Cheeto would be able to 
last five rounds, and he did though. So props to him. So, so you were expecting pure dominance. I think you said like second round stoppage, right? Was that the official? I think I was. I said third round okay, TKO. Sorry. I don't know. I said I said a handful of different things, but he man, he stuck in there. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people would look for a way out, especially how hard Sean was digging his body early on in the fight, and he. He hung in there. Tough dude. Was there anything that surprised you about Cheeto other than the toughness? Like, was there anything that you didn't expect from him? No, nah, he's just as slow as I remembered. Just as slow as I remembered. And I knew not in any of his fights, he's he's the one initiating the takedown, trying to t uh, take the person down. So I knew with Sean's distance and the way he moves side to side, there's no way he's going to be able to even grab a hold of Sean at all. So nothing really surprising, actually. Do you think that there was anything that Sean could have done to put him away, to stop him? Or do you feel like he did everything that he could? I, 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 I'm glad how smart he was with it because I think it was in the second or the third round when he really had him hurt, where Cheeto backed up. You could tell he was really hurt, um, and we knew we were going to hurt him eventually. But I knew that would be a way for Cheeto to win if Sean hurts him early on and really empties his gas tank trying to put him out. But Sean's, like I've said it before, his his fight IQ is so high in there, so he's very smart. He knew not to empty the tank trying to put him away. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. He was hitting him with clean shots over and over. They say if that fight would have been no time limit, Cheeto would, would have won. But I'm like, dude, that fight's no time limit. Both his eyes are going to be swollen shut and he's going to be the one getting killed. So I don't know what they're talking about there. And, uh, I feel like that's a new thing with the, uh, the fight IQ. I feel like Sean is getting more and more credit for that as of late last few fights, as opposed to earlier on in his career. Do you agree with that? You probably have always thought that he had it and it's something you can maybe develop over time, but I feel like he's finally getting that respect. Yeah, I think so too. I remember early on, even an amateur fight in Seattle, um, where we went to fight this kid or even his professional debut, Joe Riggs was with me and he's like, man, is he always like this? He's just like, when the lights turn on, he's just game. He can't wait to perform and just put on a show for people. No real crazy nerves, no really uh, fear of what's going to happen. He just is really good in the present moment. He's just a real uh, showman for sure. Uh, were you nervous about that body shot towards the end of the fight? Not really. I told him after the fourth round, I'm like, I'm like, we don't need to sit there and slug with him. Right. You could walk, you could bounce around, bounce around, just punch him, one shot him, two shot him. But he, like I said, he was wanting to finish. So he's the one who chose to sit in the pocket. He knew how much time there was left. So he sat in the pocket for a reason. If there wasn't that much, if there was more time left or if that was earlier in the fight, that body shot would have never landed. Uh, but I wasn't really concerned with it. I knew it was such short time that he could, he could tough it out. In the championship rounds, were you expecting them to come with something completely different? Because obviously the first three rounds were won by you guys to change the game plan, to be more aggressive, anything of that sort? I figured he'd come out there and he, he'd try to throw some crazy stuff. But also, if you if you start really throwing crazy stuff and just going, like people are like, just go, just go. It's like if you just go, there's a good chance you're going to get touched on the chin and you're going to be sleeping a few seconds later. And then everyone will be like, oh, man, he rushed in. Right. Oh, why'd he do that? Um, so I... I Sean's footwork is so good. This is similar with Marab. Marab's a crazy type of dude who's going to rush in, and he's not going to be af as afraid to sh shoot a takedown. But that also could put him in danger too. How much more enjoyable was this week as opposed to the fight week in Boston, considering how Sean was feeling? Correct me if I'm wrong. There were no serious injuries that you had to kind of avoid or couldn't do, like limitations, right? So I would imagine that week in Miami was a lot more enjoyable than Boston. Uh, yeah. Even my girlfriend just would say, just like, holy cow, you're way more at ease. I mean, there's still stress because Cheeto's, he's, he's a beast and he's good at going five rounds. Jason Pearl is a good coach, but yeah, for the, for the Aljo fight, it was a little bit different. I was just really, really nervous for that fight. Knew there was ways to win, but I thought we were going out to slaughter and, uh, he got the dub. So that felt way different and actually winning the title. This title defense feels good. Um, it definitely feels Feels a little different, though. Does it also feel different because now you're you're the guy, right? As opposed to like, oh, you want to achieve this as a team, you want to achieve it for him. But now it's a defense as opposed to chasing the gold, the greatness. So it, there's a different type of feeling, right? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Now it's like seeing him on the number six pound for pound list. That's when it really hit me. Like, holy smokes. We really, there's an opportunity to become number one pound for pound. And now defending the belt being the champion, that's when you're going to make your 
your real life changing money. Were you surprised by the uh, the support for Cheeto that week in Miami? Not really, not really. I, I kind of expected it. I, I expected there to even be louder boos and stuff. Um, but it was it was kind of fifty fifty. It, it didn't seem like overwhelming either way. It seemed fifty fifty. Um, but I thought it was going to be more for Cheeto, so that was good. So what about this uh, post-fight interaction? Sean initially said that Cheeto said to you, we're never going to be friends. And Cheeto on Monday told me like, hey, we don't need to hug it out. Like you go your way. Let's, it's all good. You're the guy who was involved in the interaction as well. What happened between you and Cheeto? Or at least what was said between you and Cheeto right after the fight? Yeah, I don't get it. With him and even Jason House, the manager, they act like this is like, it's like it, it is a war, whatever. We say something, but then you fight. And it's all good. In another life, we would be friends. He's into the same stuff. He's into eating healthy. He's into jujitsu. He's into martial arts. He's into just all these kinds of things. In another world, we would be friends. So I shook his hand after. I'm like, I don't want him to feel bad for himself and rub it in his face. I shook his hand. I'm like, man, you're a fucking warrior. Keep your head up. And I shook his hand. And he just looked at me and he said, we'll never be friends. So, I mean, that's fine. It can be better. Okay. And what happened with Jason House? Jason House, that was from the first fight. I just tweeted something. This is going to be easy money. Just joking around, just building the fight all the time. And he yeah. was bucking himself around, throwing shit, like acting like a freak show. It's like, holy, did you forget, Jason, that this is a fist fight and it's okay to talk a little shit and everything will be all good after. I don't know. He was being a little weird. Saw a clip of you guys on your on your program, the, uh, the Timbo and Sugar Show. Or is it the Sugar Show, the Sugar and Timbo Show? Which one is it? Yeah, we were dealing with names for so long. That's Timbo Sugar Show. Okay, sorry. Um, and it, it seems like uh, Sean is pretty upset about perhaps the, the accusation over the hair, the greasing. Um, and he was saying, you know, do I make this personal? Do I not? Do I take the high road? Is that accurate? Is is he annoyed about this? Is he is he very upset about this? I don't think so. I don't think truly upset. I think that's Sunday morning. He probably did a little too much snack on Saturday night, and his blood sugar was low, and he felt a little bit chippy. Um, but I, I don't think he has any truthfully ill will towards him. But he does like he's the same way as I am. After the fight, it's like let's be respectful, let's be, let's be nice, and those guys not want to, and then bringing that up, it's like, dude, how can you even say anything when you got outclassed that bad? Besides, good job, dude. It's like grease in. That was a little weird. What did you think when you initially saw that? What did you think? Did you have a giggle? Uh, which one? The 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 tweet or the, the clip? yeah when he tweeted when he tweeted that said uh, Greason did you have a giggle or did you feel bad or were you just no, like holy I mean, how he I is mean, concussed? I, I I know that greasing is a part of the sport and I've seen I, I actually just saw another tweet from uh, Jack Hermanson speaking about this um, not not about you guys just about like a, th a something that he's noticed over the years from fighters doing different things putting different things on their body. I don't know what goes on with the hair. I I never heard that before, but you know, I know I put it this way, I knew that people wouldn't receive it well because they were just going to say like, "Oh, you're making an excuse." And I I think that's what's happened, right? Just looking briefly at some of the comments on the show, on the on the video and all that stuff. So, I don't really think it's anything that's being used against you guys. Yeah. Could could yeah, you tell I mean, us your side like what 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 did he put anything in his hair? What does he put in his hair? Is it uh we were gonna get the braids done the day before on weigh-ins, but he's like, Well, Saturday is gonna be such a long day because we're fighting so late. So might as well just get the braids done um fight day and then watch some fights. But even the lady commented on one of the posts I saw, the lady who braided his hair, she said she used the normal amount of gel and uh it, it was just Oh wow, the actual yeah, lady. I don't know. Yeah, the lady who did the braids. Oh she commented gosh. on there. She's just like, I just used a normal amount of gel. I don't know what you're freaking out about. Was she the UFC lady or is she a person that you guys hired? Because I know the UFC has a I lady think, too, right? I think she was a friend of uh, Danny's, which okay. is Sean's girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, crazy stuff. And, and you know, I don't hide from the fact, like, I, I really like Cheeto a lot. I really like Sean. I really like you. I really, you know, I have no sort of, it, it would be better if everyone could just kind of be buds and, and move on and maybe you see each other down the line. So... Uh, it's tough, and I feel bad for Cheeto with what happened at his house. You know that, that yeah, that sucks. No one wants to see that. Yeah, that's messed up. So you're interested in the trilogy too? Okay, so uh, I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> you're the you're the person that I get to ask the questions to, and I'll weigh in as well if you want. Uh, obviously, next, no, it doesn't make sense. Down the line, you know, 
who knows, three, four, five fights. Who knows where you guys are at, where he's at. Um, are you saying you're not interested? Hell yeah. Oh, For okay. a title defense to rematch Cheeto, hell yeah. <laughs> and are you saying that because you like the matchup very much? I mean, yeah. like I said, that that's just different levels of guys right now. The, Sean is elite. He's an elite athlete. Cheeto's got an elite mind, but he's just his he's not that fast and he's not that strong. He doesn't have anything that's gonna threaten sugar. Yeah. Do you foresee a scenario where you meet him again, or do you think it just will never happen? I don't know. I hopefully not. And Cheeto seems like a mentally strong person, but those kind of those kind of performances like that. You've seen it in the past. It demoralizes people and it changes their career forever. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it doesn't happen to him. We'll see. But the top five, top 10 now, the bantamweight is so stacked. I can't, it's possible, but I don't see him really working his, himself back up to a title shot. What was the vibe like backstage? It seemed like there were all kinds of like, um, like minds everywhere. You got Peter Jan coming after you, you got Marab coming after you. What was, uh, what was the vibe like? Did you feel like people were coming after you guys? Yeah. That was the first time I felt like that. Usually there's security back there keeping other guys away, but Peter and his team were purposely waiting when we were coming back. Really? Purposely sitting there waiting. And I've, I mean, I've been a fan of Peter for a long time, so I went to try to shake his hand, and he just wouldn't shake my hand. He shook my hand earlier in the week when I was when I was being nice to him. I'm like, I'll, I'll be nice to you. And then he just wouldn't shake my hand, and he was talking shit. And then his coach and his team started talking shit, so I was like, damn, these guys were looking for trouble. I started walking away. They kept talking. So I'm like, I'm not going to let these guys just punk me out. So I turned around and started talking shit back. And he, and his coach said, coach versus coach. And I pointed at him and I laughed at him. And that kind of pissed him off. And they they kind of got uh, flared up a bit. What what were they saying to you? I, they didn't speak English. They were just trying oh. to mumble. They were mumbling shit. Do you think they wanted to fight? Yeah, it seemed like it. They were perked up. I think Peter was, I mean, Peter was being smart. He was trying to cause a little scene that everyone catches on camera. And then they can sell it for a later rematch, which... If he keeps winning, it's definitely possible. Were they waiting for you at the at the locker room? Literally, right, right when you come out of the arena. Yeah, there, him and his team are standing there. You come out of the arena, you go to the left where the doctors' tents are, and that's where they were all standing. Damn, and that's never happened. Yeah, that's never happened. And even the security guard was like telling the UFC people, like, "What are you guys doing, letting these guys that close?" And then they were yelling back and forth, and then they finally got them to to move on. But that was the first time I was looking left, looking right. You got to be ready to rumble at all times. <laughs> yeah. And what about Marab? Uh, Marab was sitting there with his uh with his little fat friend there. And uh, <laughs> Marab's always nice. He's always nice. He's a funny guy, too. And uh, Sean didn't recognize him. He walked by. Uh, Marab said something. And Sean just got done with a five-round war. So nothing really. Nothing really with Marab. Okay. Um, do you think Marab is next? I mean, 10 fight win streak, 10 fight win streak. There's, I, I just feel like there's a good chance he's next. Who else would there be? Corey Sandhagen, probably a little too soon for Ilya Torpuria, but it's going to be up to the UFC, but there's probably the highest chance that it's going to be Marab next, I think. If it was up to you, would, would you choose Marab? Do you think that that's the fight that makes most sense? I I mean, depends what you're looking at from like, are you looking at from like a... What's gonna what, what fight's gonna make the most money and have the most viewers? Um, but I, I think it's fair. I think it's fair. We got to get through this guy. He's he's earned it. Ten fight win streak. Doesn't want to just don't want to make him keep fighting. And and I mean, yeah, I think it's fair. Okay. Um, I saw yesterday Sean tweeted incredible meeting with the UFC. Do you know what they talked about? Yeah, he gave me a little bit of he oh, gave me okay. a little bit of juice, but that'll be all just for him to release. Oh damn! I thought you were just about to say he gave me juice. I'm happy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Is it good stuff? Yeah, I mean, heck yeah, it's good, good, exciting stuff. It's it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Oh wow! Okay, so left field type of stuff. Uh, I mean, I, I just can't. I just okay, can't do sorry, it. Sorry. He's got to be the one to release yeah, the no, news. I don't want to put you in that spot. But can I, can I just ask? He did tweet something like, hey, guys, uh, it's going to be Marab next. 2025 is going to be nuts. And then some people are like, wait, you're not going to fight till 2025? Are <laughs> you able to explain that one? I mean, yeah. I mean, just get, just get, get the little guy flustered up a little <laughs> bit more, and that's about it. Uh, what about the challenge that is Marab? Is this one that makes you more nervous than the Cheeto fight? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Marab is just an animal. Anyone who's on a 10-fight win streak, too, they have a certain sense of confidence to him, which is scary in itself. And his cardio is freakishly. It's it's so, so scary. His five-round cardio is so scary, but I know also he's never faced anybody like Sean. And it's going to be a big cage. And uh, I'm really excited. There's definitely ways for us to win. There's ways for us to lose the fight, too. We show up not on that night. Sean shows up every every time, but Mrab's a problem. He really is. But there's ways for us to win. Of Of the potential contenders at 135, is he the biggest problem, in your opinion? Or is there someone else in the pipeline that you view as a bigger problem? Uh, I think the biggest problem was Aljo. Wow. I think he was the he was the biggest one. He was just such a large guy, so lengthy, expert back taker. Um, he's not the type, hey, he's not the really the type to get on top and really beat your ass. He's gonna pass your guard, he's gonna force you to try to stand up. Now he's on your back for the rest of the round. Super strong, physical. I think Aljo was the most dangerous fight for us. Wow. More so than Marab. I think so. The pace. All that with Marab, that's yeah, just the the funkiness of the funkiness of yeah. Aljo and the length of him and what he's good at. Uh, Marab's up there though. Marab's a huge problem. Like he's a scary, scary guy, and it's gonna be, it's gonna get, it's perfect because it's gonna get Sean super excited for the fight and the challenge and just to shut everybody up again. Mm -hmm. um, we spoke to him on the Monday after the fight, and he said he was all good. I know he was kind of, you know, had the boot and had, as far as like his health. Is concerned, how is he feeling now a week or so later? Super lucky. Okay. No, there's gonna be no surgeries, there's gonna be nothing, just some bumps and bruises from beating that Cheeto up, and uh that's it. Just let the inflammation go down, let his mind chill out for a week or two, and then back to work. So um realistically, when would you like to see him fight again? I mean, healthy like that, <sighs> September would be cool, October would be cool, November would be cool. But, okay. Yeah. Him at the sphere because of his Mexican roots makes all the sense. That would be sweet. I've never even been inside that sphere. Have you been in there? No, I haven't. It looks fantastic though. I just saw him on Instagram reels. It looks really cool. Yeah. The U2 stuff and that other thing with the planets and all that. I wonder if they'd try to have the smaller cage in there or stick with the bigger cage. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean it's quite big, but it's very like small, the like the surface, right? I don't even know what they're gonna do. And also would it be would it be like distracting for the fighters if there's a screen behind the action, or would they make that black during the fight? I don't really know what you know what I mean. I don't think it would be. I mean, we've fought in similar places like LFA here in Phoenix. It's in a theater like that, not near the capacity, but it's in a theater like that where the screens behind you and you're on stage. So it wouldn't be that much different. I don't think. I mean, those screens are quite. I mean, it's quite extensive. Yeah, maybe it would. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it does seem like a great time. Now, what about that video you posted, uh, which I've watched maybe 30 times of you and, um, <laughs> you and Sean recreating, uh, Oscar and Ryan before coming on my show. I mean, this, the, by the way, the jab was, was on point in that video. You were, you were freaking, <laughs> you were on fire. Um, what was your reaction when you saw all of this come out initially, Ryan, saying that and and i and I, i'd like to ask your opinion on the current state of ryan but like initially when all that because it's, it's really kind of before everything changed a little bit what was your reaction to his confidence about fighting you know sean in an mma fight and how he would do in an mma fight at first i thought it was like really funny i'm like holy cow this guy is on serious crack but now now that it's gone so much and i've been seeing more of him on twitter and what's been going on it's almost past the point of being funny I don't know if it's like you box your whole life like that and you have that many concussions and then you're smoking that much weed and then you're drinking alcohol on a daily basis and then you're around people that aren't really good for you. Um, it's, it seems like he's just going having some manic episodes and, and turn into a psycho a little bit. It's actually pretty sad. It, it's... Yeah, I mean, you know fighters. You are a former fighter. You're around fighters all day, every day. When you see this behavior, the social media behavior and whatnot, does it seem alarming? There are some people who are saying maybe he shouldn't fight. They should postpone the fight. They should call it off. They should take him out of the fight, et cetera, et cetera. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. I mean, I think that's up to the commission to do a good job and really see if this guy's mentally stable because if he has that much brain swelling already, he's already have CTE plus he's doesn't live a super healthy lifestyle. I don't know if he does or doesn't, but it sounds like he drinks alcohol a lot. Mm. 
um, a, another knockout would probably not do the kid very good. Right. Those exciting plans of the UFC have nothing to do with a crossover fight, right? Uh, can't say. Okay. Damn, I thought I was going <laughs> to catch you something on that one. Th- do you have interest in seeing this? Yeah. Hell yeah. Because you do? a lot of people will watch. It's some serious easy money. You remember Randy Court. Randy Couture, James Tony, but I know Sugar's not that type to just go take him down and whoop his ass. Sean would make it a point to knock him out. Yeah, in, in MMA, would you be like, let's say he's like, all right, fine, I'll I'll do the boxing thing. Would you be in favor of that? Of who? Uh, Sean to box yeah, Ryan? Yeah, that would be a serious challenge, a serious challenge. But I, it's it's hard for me to say it's not possible with Sean. He has no. so much belief in himself, and he's such a good athlete. And people are finding it out. He's such a good athlete. His fight IQs. There's ways for him to win that fight. People will go crazy. Will like, are you serious? There's ways for him to win that fight. There is. And so I wouldn't be opposed to that. No. How does he win that fight? He could KO Ryan Garcia with those tiny gloves. If you've ever seen those gloves, little eight ounce gloves with a full cast underneath, and he has knockout power in both hands. And Ryan Garcia probably doesn't spar many people that are quite like Suge. Um. He definitely could knock out Ryan Garcia. Wow. That would be crazy. You think, are you a boxing fan? Yeah, not not a huge, like, diehard boxing okay. fan, but I bo- box a lot of my life. Well, I mean, you're going to be busy on May 4th, right? You're, May 4th is. You're, aren't you fighting Jaime Munguia on Mexican? Yeah. Yeah, that's what everyone's saying. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it is. I'm not it, familiar with that Jaime Mogi. Are you? Yeah, he's good. He's really good. He's like 47 and 0, and he's like 27 years old. It's kind of crazy. Um, Dang. He's never fought anyone quite like Canelo, but he's you know he's worked his way up. And this is Mexico versus Mexico, but it is really truly uncanny how much you look like Canelo. You've heard this, yes? I mean, I hear it every <laughs> single day being in Phoenix. Sometimes multiple times a day. <laughs> every store I go into. <laughs> It's um, do you get actually stopped and like people are like holy shit it's Canelo or yeah. is it just like are you that guy I'm not people sure people who don't know uh, English and stuff they'll come and get pictures <laughs> and you and you play yeah. along yeah yeah <laughs> put, my, put my fist up <laughs> you don't feel bad <laughs> I don't feel bad I just do it and get on with my day I guess it's better you know if they believe that they met Canelo no harm no foul yeah yeah for sure did you did you get sad seeing the news about uh jake paul mike tyson or were you pumped about it sad i don't know if sad i mean it's a hot topic uh we were just talking to mvp about it um so the 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 truth is i found out like a month before that this was in the works like if you got by that guy in puerto rico this would be in the fight or the direction that they would go in and at first this is my honest i've never really talked about this but like when i was first told about it i was like really like I thought we were going in a different direction. I thought we were going down like the just the traditional boxing route, right? We're just going to fight guys who any eight and one, nine and one fighter is fighting, right? Just guys who are okay, and you work your way up. And this seemed like a massive departure. Then I was told about you know AT and T Stadium, eighty thousand. Then I was told about Netflix, and you know you can't have just any opponent on. It. And so I understood it, but of course, you know, thirty year age gap. Um, Mike has only fought once in the past God knows how many years, and that was an exhibition fight against Roy Jones. Jake is a lot more active, a lot younger. I still, We still don't know about how long the rounds are. We still don't know about how many rounds. We still don't know if it's a pro or exhibition bout. I, I feel quite confident in saying there's not going to be headgear or anything like that that people have been saying. But I do want to know those details. Um, and, you know, I don't know if this is stupid, but the videos that we've seen, like of Mike hitting mitts with Rafael Cordero, even though they're 20 seconds, does make me feel a little bit better. I know those are just 20 second videos edited, but like I can't look like that if you did a 20 second video of me hitting mitts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. People keep asking me my opinion and people keep like criticizing my opinion. And I I don't know if I have a black and white opinion on this because there's just so many different layers. I don't think Jake. What I said, sorry for going long on this, but it's just like, I feel like it's my brain is, gets so tied up. Everyone said Jake Paul is a novice. Now they're afraid that Jake Paul is going to kill Mike Tyson. I don't think that that's possible. I don't think he has that in him. I don't think he's at that level. But I do think that the optics of 5727 is something that is hard for people to stomach. And I don't, I don't blame them for that. The other thing is, I really hope that the rest of the card features some true blue legit boxers. So then you could say, hey, if you don't like this, if you're a 
legit boxing fan, at least this is going to be showcased on Netflix on a massive platform. That is good. So after saying all that, how do you feel about it? Are they going to do a, I wonder how hard the drug testing is going to be because okay. if Mike Tyson can, can be on some special supplements, which he should be able to be with that, with that age gap, someone who's been through the lifestyle he's been through, um, done the drugs, all the concussions, his testosterone naturally cannot be very high. Hmm. So I wonder if they're going to be able to make it fair. If he's not able to get on any anything and they're going to have to fight, it's like you saw all those videos of him walking around with his cane. And I wonder if that cane was from his back being bad because if it's longer than four rounds, like how hard is he going to be able to train for that match? And I'm curious, just like you, how how many rounds and what ounce gloves? The gloves as well, yeah. And uh, the length of the rounds too because uh, I believe off the top of my head the Roy Jones fight was two-minute rounds. And obviously, that's a little bit more manageable for someone his age. Um, does this does this make you think differently of Jake? No, I mean everyone's so complaining about it so much. Like, oh my god! But it's like, how many of those people are going to watch on that night? All yeah. of them, right? Everyone's going to be pumped up to watch it. I don't think Dick Verlea Jake at all. He just took these fights. He was trying to make people happy, which. He just took these fights with a guy who's ten and one, with yeah. a guy who's who's nine and one, and it's like none of those got any attention. No one's talking about them. So he's like, "All right, why not make a?" He's probably making a ton of cheddar. Yeah. A lot of people are going to watch. So how can you be mad at him for that? Not only that, he got criticized for those fights against the the pure boxers, right? People are like, "Oh, Uber driver, cab driver, you know, delivery man," and so. I, I haven't asked him this, I haven't talked to him, but maybe there's probably like, all right, screw you guys. You wanted me to go down this path. Now you don't like it. So now I'm going to go back to the influencer path. Now, of course, people would say like, all right, well, you don't have to fight a 57-year-old Mike Tyson. But I, I, I don't know. I don't think Mike Tyson's going to get embarrassed. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. You think he gets embarrassed? Think what do you I think happens? I don't think he's going to get embarrassed. No. Hell no. If I had to pick what's going to happen, I just think it comes down to, is he going to be able to do some special supplements or is he not? If he is, then the fight will probably be competitive. If he's not able to do any special subs, it's like he's going to get tired. Yeah. And and to be clear, do you think it should just be for Mike that he's allowed to do this and not Jake or everyone could do whatever? Yeah. Doing? Okay. I think my just Mike. I mean, if there's if there's an age gap of over twenty years, you right. should be able to do a little something, something. But it's just funny. No matter what, there's so people. Habib undefeated. People that talk shit about Habib. Sure. John Jones, greatest of all time. People talk shit about John Jones. No matter what, the people are going to talk shit. So when when I see fighters being like, "Well, the people want to see it," it's like, God, who cares? Just do. Just it. get paid. Yeah, just do you. Um, so the fights that you have coming up, you said you have four fighters coming up. Which uh, which show is that, and who is that? Yeah, we have four fighters coming up. I have a five and zero kid named Tommy McMillan, five and zero pro. Um, he should be able to, if he can get a good, nice finish here. We'll probably see him on the Contender Series in the fall. Kid named Ezra Elliott. He's one of the ones that corner corner with us. Um, it, he's like a grappling phenom. He's going to do the ADCC West Coast Trials coming up. His last win was against a kid who won the East Coast Trials. So he's just. And animals names Ezra Elliott, and then I have two amateurs. This kid named JoJo Griffin, who's two and zero, and then another kid who's like a grappling phenom. His name's David Clay. He's nineteen years old, two-time purple belt world champion, and he's an animal. And uh, it'll be in Great Falls, Montana, my hometown. And oh, Sean yeah. treated us to a private jet, so he got us a jet there and back. So that'll be fun taking those guys and Damn. having a good time. That is great. Are you from Great Falls? Or are you from Missoula? I was. Born and raised in Great Falls. Oh, wow. Look at this. You don't often get to fight or like to corner guys over there, right? Uh, once in a while, at least probably once or twice a year, they, they have a, a show out there. Okay. Well, business is booming. It's good to be the Kings, right? Yeah. I mean, at this point, it's just like there's people looking up to us. There's a lot of eyes on us. The only thing is just to keep trying to improve, keep trying to get better, find people that are better than us in different areas and keep trying to improve. It's hard when you're that good. Usually before the fights, before we go to the fight, like the day of a couple hours before, we, we're usually watching highlights of people who are trying to mimic at the time, trying to watch maybe Roy Jones Jr., maybe Conor McGregor stuff. But now it's like we're putting on his highlights oh, and wow. watching what he does. The last fight we watched before we walked out the door to head to fight Cheeto is we replayed the Aljo fight, um, replayed the Holly and Paiva fight, and now we're just rewatching his fights before we go. So wow. it's kind of cool. Is that is that the um, 
Is that is that like the routine? You just watch fights before it's time to go? Yeah, and usually even fight week, trying to keep your mind off it. So fight week, we're not watching a ton, but usually fight day, we usually turn on some fights, get get. get and you're not watching the bit. live fights. You're just watching select old fights. You're not watching, because like you guys are in the main event. You could be watching the prelims. You're not doing that. Yeah, we're just watching select old fights. And then when you're done, by the way, he, he told me he, he just went from the post-fight presser to the club, didn't shower, didn't change. Did you do the same or did you, uh, did you have a change? Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to go, I didn't want to go to the club. It was three 30. We, we didn't even have time to change three 30, but all the, all the influencers and stuff want to see Sean and Russ was there, wanted to see Sean. So he still had blood on his knee from Cheeto's face and still in his spandex and at the club at the table. That is why. And you went too. Yeah. And then you're yep. hitting mitts in the hotel at like six in the morning or something. Yep. 630. That was right after we rewatched the fight and then uh, hit the hay after that. What a life. Who's Russ, by the way? Russ is a rapper and uh, oh. he's a really good rapper. Damn. He has a bunch of hits. You'd probably like his tunes. Okay. I should look him up. You a big rap guy? Uh, I'm all over the place. Depends my mood. Sometimes like last night in the gym, I had nineties country playing. Sometimes I have some limp biscuit playing. Uh, yeah. Sometimes Metallica, sometimes some, some nineties rap, sometimes some little baby. So it depends the mood. Okay. Well, it's all working. Uh, congratulations on another big win for you guys. Uh, very happy for you and looking forward to this big news or whatever they're talking about. And, uh, hopefully we see him back later on this year. It's the Timbo sugar show. Your, your YouTube is killing it, the social media, the narration, it's all coming together. So well done. Thanks a lot, Ariel. Good to have you on. Thank you, Tim. All the best. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.